You know, I get a lot of questions about the G string, our lowest string on the violin. This will apply to the C string for violas. A lot of people find it very taxing, very awkward, painful to play on their lowest string. And so I'm going to do this video, um, but it's, it's for more than just playing on the lower string. If you are aware of the three axes that violin and viola use, it's going to help you settle in to the right posture for your body type, whether you have a long neck, short neck, broad shoulders, narrow, slopey shoulders, whether you're short or tall. This is what I call your own personal geometry. If you're aware of the three axes that you have at your disposal, it'll help you to customize your posture and your shoulder rest and everything else for your own personal geometry. So the three axes are the slant of the violin, meaning is it exactly parallel to the floor? Is it slanted up slightly? Is it slanted down slightly? And different people hold it different ways. Um, there's a lot of range that's considered acceptable and very little that's considered unacceptable. And for fiddling, there's nothing that's not acceptable. <laughs> you can play it down here and you're absolutely fine. Um, but slanted slightly down is okay. Slanted slightly up is okay. And some people change, especially those who play without a shoulder rest. They change their angle depending on if they're shifting or what they're doing. So, but be aware, that's axis one, or it's one of the axes, um, how the angle of your violin to the floor. The next axis is the angle of the violin from your neck. Okay, tall people can hold it clear out here and they can still pull a straight bow. If I held it out here, as short as I am, 5'2", um, on the E string, I, don't, I can barely get to the tip of the bow on the G string, I, I would never have a straight bow. So I bring the axis in to my right to where I can pull a nice straight bow on all four strings for my height. Okay, and that's a personal thing. It's just there's no right or wrong. There's just lots of, um, lots of area that you can shift around to make it more comfortable for yourself. The last axis is the tilt, the actual tilt of the violin. Okay, so how much do you have the E string towards the floor and the G string towards the ceiling? Okay, so this is one axis, this is another axis, and that's another axis. And the one that applies most to your G string or your C string is um, the last one that I mentioned, and that is how much do you tilt your violin? So, if you struggle to comfortably play for extended periods on your lower string. You could either have your violin too far out to the left, and depending on how tall you are, you might find it an advantage to move your violin more towards your right, towards the, the front of your body. It's always going to be off to the left at some angle. You don't ever want to have it right in front, but you know what I'm saying. Um, so you might want to play with that, but most of all, you'll want to maybe tilt your violin a little bit more and that will involve changing the position of your shoulder rest. Now me, I've mentioned this before and people were very fascinated by it. I actually, I'll change the, my chin position. If I have a long extended passage on the G string, I let my chin off the shoulder, the chin rest so that I'm just hanging on to the edge here. You see that? And what that does is it, look at my, my axis. My violin's very tilted. I don't normally play that way. But for an extended G string passage, it makes it really easy. And then I take, I play until I have a rest and I might take my thumb and push it back up or I can just do it with one hand too. It's just a split second is all you need to shift back and forth between those two positions. Um, some people might disagree with that, but it's really solved a lot of physical problems for me. So, if you don't want to use change this axis, you've got other things you can do, but they're more taxing on the body. So, to play on the lower string, our elbow goes more to the right. To play on 
the higher string, our elbow can relax and go more to the floor or to the left. E string, A, D, G, G, D, A, E. Okay, and of course playing first finger on the G string is not as hard as playing fourth finger on the G string. So once in a while, if you've got a repeated fourth finger on the G string, help him out by one of two things. Rotate your, your elbow under to, to bring the pinky, watch, brings the pinky right over the G string and you don't have to do anything more than rotating your shoulder, your elbow. <laughs> okay, the other thing that you can do is you can change the, the tilt of your violin by moving your, your chin. More controversial. That one is more controversial, but I, I do it all the time. And that's, that's it. It's a simple concept, but just remember that you've got three axes to play with, and the most critical axis for playing on your lower string is the tilt of that violin plus the ability to swivel your elbow. All right, so that's it. Um, hope it helps. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.